God. I didn't really feel what other people say that they feel. So in a way I felt like, well, is it just not existent for me? Am I always gonna be like this? Everything that I study at the end, it all points to one direction and that's Islam and that is your deen and that is religion. And through that, I can feel the deepening of my connection with my deen. And I am happy because I'm in a place where now I'm not just praying, but I'm praying with intention. I'm praying while I'm crying. I'm praying with effort and with passion. And of course, not all of my prayers are like that. But um, especially when, you know, I don't feel good or I'm having a bad day or I'm in a bad situation, those are always the best prayers because that's when you really pray with heart. You pray with the intention to really just ask God for help, but also thank him and thank him and be so grateful and so accepting of the challenges that he puts in your or that he puts in my life. Welcome to all you beautiful souls out there. I did not plan to make this video. I just felt like I wanted to make it as a spur in the moment kind of thing or spur of the moment kind of thing. You know what I mean. So I just wanted to make a video talking about my journey to Islam and my um, way to spirituality and to discovering the beauty, the true beauty of Islam. I was inspired to make this video by uh, the channel Yusuf Truth, which uh, I don't think he's the first person that made this video, but you know, I watched his video and I felt like, you know, I want to talk about my story as well. I believe that everyone has a story to spirituality or to their religion or to their faith. And uh, I wanted to share my side of the story. Okay, well, this is um, not going to be a convert story, but nonetheless, it's still going to be... Uh, an amazing story to me and a valuable story to me and hopefully it'll provide uh, some value to anyone who is watching this and I wanted to make this video just cuz I really want this channel to be more authentic I want to be able to be more open to you about who I am because I want to be able to have these deeper discussions with you guys I don't want this to be a channel where it's just all toxic positivity where I'm just showing the beautiful things about life and then completely neglecting the whole point and our whole purpose here. So I really wanted to incorporate more religious um, videos and religious things in my videos really because <laughs> it's a huge huge part of me and it's a huge huge part of my life and who I am. And it seems silly if I would hide that part of me with you, especially because of how important it is in today's day and age, especially really. But I'll start from the beginning. So I encourage you to grab your cup of coffee or tea or whatever you like to drink and just enjoy a story of me becoming more aware of the whole purpose of existence, basically. <laughs> Okay, so I'll start from the very beginning. I grew up in a Muslim family. I'm Egyptian, so of course uh, my entire family is Muslim, so I was born out of this world as a Muslim. And as a child, I grew up in Saudi Arabia, which is a very Islamic country. And of course, going to school, even though I was in an international school, and it was an English school, I did still have Islamic classes. So I took those Islamic classes and boy, I hated them so much because of one thing and one thing only, well, one thing mostly, which is the teacher. If the teacher is terrible, then trust me, the children are gonna hate the class. And it was that way for me in our Islamic class. Yeah, I just didn't like her because she was just the kind of person to make you feel guilty if you were uh, doing something that was different from what was conventionally, you know, religious or what was the right thing. And it wasn't, Islam wasn't communicated in a good way. 
it wasn't communicated as this beautiful thing that is meant to be the path and the guide of your life it was instead taught to us as oh these are the rules this is what you need to do you can't do this and just memorize these words that you have no idea what they actually mean she had a very bad negative energy that she spread a lot and i really hated going to islamic class but i also always felt like i was a little bit less and behind than all of the other students uh, i noticed when i read arabic because i'm egyptian my sort of pronunciation is very different from you know the traditional saudi or or lebanese or syrian pronunciation so that always made me feel very different and it's very weird because i was the only egyptian in my class so i was always afraid like this is so this sounds weird but i was i was always afraid to talk arabic because my arabic was so different and i guess a part of me was just really afraid that uh, people would make fun of me about that which I know is very silly but you know in the mind of a 10 year old or a 12 year old that's what was going on I always felt like um, I had a, a connection to my Islam but I never felt it in a spiritual way it was kind of just something like your parents tell you you need to pray you pray you need to fast you fast and it's kind of just like Oh, I'm just following the people that are superior to me because that's what's taught and that's what I need to do but it was never taught in a way where that shows the true beauty of what Islam is and what Allah can be to you and I think that definitely is a big reason today to why so so many people so many teenagers so many adolescents they feel so disconnected from spirituality from religion it's because we're taught it in a way that encourages more of a toxic culture than a positive one it's taught us something that if you're not doing this then you are judged as bad and if you're doing this then you are judged as good and you get into this programming where you think well religion is all about judgment and i don't want to judge just like i don't want to be judged so i'm not gonna you know follow any religion and i feel like that's a very common theme that we see today but yeah i guess fast forward a little while uh we moved to canada after or during my beginning high school years and uh, that was a very very tough time just because transitioning from a world to a completely different world was very sort of isolating and obviously coming here to a very non-religious country it was a very big difference for me it's like all of a sudden you know people weren't wearing abayas everywhere or hijabs everywhere and um, no one was really praying at the times that they needed to pray so it was very uh, shifting like 180 degrees where it was something completely different and I sort of got used to that a little bit it was for me personally as I was in my teenage years I think my relationship with my Dean wasn't very strong I would pray but I'd only pray a few times I'd be too lazy you know I would do all the things that you had to do like you know fast and occasionally pray and read the Quran but like I never did them with a purpose I always did them as kind of a robot doing what you're supposed to do following the path of society without really knowing why you're doing it but I remember there was one day and this was around when I just started university and I asked my mom it was always in the back of my mind where I would always think when people say oh I have a deep connection with God or I pray to God and he listens to me and I feel him I I'd always wonder what that feels like because I felt like I don't really have a connection with God I didn't really feel what other people say that they feel so in a way i felt like well 
is it just not existent for me? Am I always going to be like this? So I remember asking my mom, after how does someone feel a connection with God? What do I have to do to feel that connection with Allah and to um, feel like I have, you know, a connection with my religion and with my deen? I guess the answer didn't help me very much because I was still very confused after that and I was confused a few months after that and I think the biggest pivotal moment was probably after COVID. Before COVID, life was very hectic. It's like every hour you had somewhere to go and something to do and your mind was never left to think alone. It was never left to just wander and contemplate the existence of life or the purpose of why we're here. So it was a very rush, rush, rush kind of thing. You know, in our culture these days, you never really stop to think, you never really stop to give your mind a break, which is very, very bad, and it's very, very toxic. And uh, I think I feel grateful as much of a struggle it was, and I know it was a struggle for so many people with COVID. I feel grateful also because it was the biggest thing that tied me closer to my religion, because I was forced to stop I was forced to think and I thought about a lot of things and I came out of it knowing so much more because I felt like I was seeking that knowledge so basically around that time you know everything was sort of cancelled so I had a lot of time in my hands and I thought well you know what maybe I can use this time wisely and do what I've always wanted to do and that is to um, understand my religion a little bit more understand this them and to kind of build sort of that knowledge and foundation that I knew would be really important in the future but I never knew why so I started searching a lot online uh, for just explanations of the Quran what really tied me is that I really really wanted to understand the Quran because that is literally Allah's text it's the revelation it's what started Islam all of it so i felt like that was the most important part that i wanted to get started with so i searched for tafsir something that would let me understand it a little bit better and through my searches i uh ran across this one video i, d I remember i decided that i'm gonna get the tafsir of every surah in the quran so i remember i searched on youtube since you know, these days, I love learning on YouTube, uh, and I think that's very, very similar to many other people my age. So I searched for that, and I remember finding this video, and it was sort of like a drawing explanation, interpretation kind of thing. And it created what was once a bunch of meaningless words for me that I did not understand into a whole bigger story that I could not only understand but tie to my own life and tie to my understanding of all of existence and of all of islam and that was a very big pivotal point for me because i was happy that i finally found something that i understood because a lot of the things that i first searched for were all arabic interpretations and all arabic tafsir and that was something that to this day i still struggle with my arabic so it was something that it just didn't click with me but this one was an english one and that was the difference and yeah it was english and obviously when you're translating arabic to english it doesn't even come close to the beauty of what it said in arabic but somehow this person made it work and i watched more and more of his videos until i figured out that he had an entire website dedicated to doing tafsir of all the stories of all the surahs and having courses and even teaching arabic i decided that's what my life's mission is gonna be from now on ever since i discovered that website which is bayina tv by the way um i will leave the text of it here just if anyone wants to go ahead and see it it's, it has helped me so so much and every time I listen to this guy and every time I listen to him talking about the Quran but not just talking about it but 
talking about it in a way that shows just how beautiful it is and you can tell from the way that he talks is that he's very passionate about this subject and he's very passionate about this and I can understand why now. Yeah, I'm still in the whole journey of furthering my understanding of the Quran by understanding first the meaning and there's so much, so much, so much work and so much knowledge I still have ahead of me and I can't wait to get all that knowledge but also I'm putting little steps every day to get that knowledge. So for example, I leave 30 minutes out of my day when I first wake up to just watch the videos of the tafsir of each surah and as I progress and progress, further my understanding and my intellect in the religion of Islam. And it's not even just that because it doesn't stop there. Every time I study anything that's not related to Islam like biology or any of things that are related to my studies in my university whether that's physical activity or exercise or psychology or even yoga I continue to be sure that this is truly truly truth and this is what truth feels like because everything that I study at the end it all points to one direction and that's Islam and that is your deen and that is religion and through that I can feel the deepening of my connection with my deen and I am happy because I'm in a place where now I'm not just praying but I'm praying with intention I'm praying while I'm crying I'm praying with effort and with passion and of course not all of my prayers are like that but um, especially when you know I don't feel good or I'm having a bad day or I'm in a bad situation those are always the best prayers because that's when you really pray with heart you pray with the intention to really just ask God for help but also thank him and thank him and be so grateful and so accepting of the challenges that he puts in your or that he puts in my life. I believe that my journey has only begun and it's far from over and I will live every single day trying to further my deen and my Islam and understanding the Quran, understanding God's words and his guidance and following his path and that's basically my story so far. This is a fraction of my story. My story was actually a lot bigger than that but it's, this is what I could manage to put into words. <laughs> but I obviously could not put my heart into words and my feeling into words and my feeling of gratitude for being among the most beautiful and amazing Muslim community. And yeah, I hope you like this video. And I also hope it provided some sort of help for you if you are that person who is in the place where you want to feel a bigger spiritual connection to to your religion and to your faith I understand where you're at and I also understand what you're feeling and hopefully this video helped you if I could say one thing it's just that uh, search for knowledge because if you search you will find and if you don't find then you're not searching hard enough but yeah that's it for today uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and um, I hope this marks the beginning of a new direction for me and my videos. I really do want to incorporate more Islamic thought into it and I do want to incorporate more deeper conversations. And I also hope to continue growing this channel with however many of you that are watching. And I wish you all a lovely, lovely day or night and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!